knock you down on the ground. You can't get back up. Oh, please, Vinny. Every time. <laughs> I, I, I'm, on, I'm on the edge. Every time. David Young versus AJ Styles for the exhibition title. It's a good match. It was a good match. David Young is a athletically talented fellow who is just an absolute complete black hole of charisma. Like, there's a point here. They're putting over Spinebuster the entire match, and like 10 minutes in, well, when eight and a half minutes, but six minutes in, he finally hits the Spinebuster, and AJ kicks at it too, and uh, David Young has zero reaction, absolutely zero reaction. Well, you see, Benny, he had a, he had a multitude of Spinebusters. I see. So he doesn't pin a man with one, he's got another. Yeah. The thing I got out of this match was AJ was doing so much stuff. Yes. And it was probably criticized to a degree at the time, but, you know, when you're AJ Styles' size... Like, you got to do that kind of stuff to get over. And there were many guys that did do that and didn't end up getting over. But here we are 21 years later. He's a gigantic star. And he doesn't need to work that style anymore. But that's what he had to do at that time to try to get his foot in the door and, and, and get over. And it's funny to watch it now because, like, he's he's like a thousand, thousand times better as a worker now than he was back then. But, you know, he was more athletic and he's doing all sorts of crazy stuff. But, man, he's just fucking nailing dudes. And he hit a clothesline, looked like he killed the guy. And then he does the uh, uh, spiral tap at the end. Yeah. And it's just, I'm going to jump and spin and, like, cover everything sensitive up on your body because I don't know where I'm going to fucking land and you don't either. <laughs> and, and that was a finish. Yeah. But it was it was fun to watch a young AJ Styles. But, man, you know, he was he was just doing all sorts of crazy stuff and... It was just nutty. I think it just moves. I think he still does it every once in a while. But he used to do this arm drag, where he would grab the guy and almost almost spin around him like a whole, whole like a head scissors or something, and spin all the way around him and then whip him down. That was completely awesome. Um, Bobcat continues to suck. <laughs> she spent the entire time not only on the phone, yeah, but asking the crowd to keep it down so she can talk on the phone. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fans are chanting "crack whore" at her. That was the exact moment. Uh, when Don reminds us we can pay for this every week if we want to. So, yeah, uh, they go back and forth. Uh, David Young tries a top rope piranha. AJ blocks it. Hits an avalanche Styles Clash for the win. It was, by light years, the best thing on the show. Dude, he goes up for that Styles Clash. Actually, first it was uh, Young going for the Hurricane Run, and then AJ turns into a Styles Clash. And if you listen, Mike Tanay goes crazy, and he screams, Middle rope styles clash tarantula dropped into a pedigree. <laughs> I didn't catch that. It's like only Mike Tanay would uh. break down the styles clash into describing it as a tarantula dropped into a pedigree. That was incredible. All right. <laughs> Um, and then afterwards, uh, Bobcat is celebrating. So AJ Styles, the hero, grabs her and violently throws her to the mat. Charming show. Charming. Goldilocks is backstage interviewing the Rainbow Express. They insult her hair. You know what, by the way? I don't want to hear one motherfucker in the comments explain that this was acceptable 21 years ago because I watched this live, and uh, all this shit they did with the women was appalling. It was just as appalling back then as it is today. So don't do this shit like when they go, well, we didn't know about concussions. You know, even though Bret Hart retired due to multiple concussions and everyone on the fucking planet knew about it, and people were writing about dementia pugilistica in the fucking 1908s or whatever. I mean, fuck. This was shit. It was shit then, and it's shit now. Goldilocks interviews the Rainbow Express. They insult her hair. Gertner does his poem. I didn't write it down. Something about sex toys. And says the Rainbow Express will be named winners by default. Because Chris Harris and James Storm cannot continue. And then he grabs Goldilocks and forcibly kisses her. Yes. And walks away. Which the Rainbow Express say, gross, on the way out. Yeah, because they're gay, you see. Yes, yeah. I got it. Also, the book that Gertner was reading, Sexist by Henry Miller, he was just reading because it had sex in the title. <laughs> it was just, it was a three-part autobiography that had nothing to do with sex. Huh. <laughs> okay. So it's announced... As Rainbow Express versus Chris Harris and James Storm in the finals of the tag team tournament. And I just have to go off about what a shit tournament this is. And it gets worse because suddenly Harris and Storm can't go. And so Jerry Lynn and AJ Styles just get a buy into the finals. Now, it probably made for a better match. God bless Harris and Storm. Well, you, you, miss, you missed my favorite part, by the way. Uh, yeah. It's when uh, someone says, they must have opponents for this match. And Gertner very loudly says, what? <laughs> <laughs> Gertner's funny. My issue 
with this match goes actually all the way back to AJ and David Young. Because AJ, I didn't time these matches. I got to time them from now on. Right. AJ and David Young went, I don't know. Uh, what, I got it here. What do you got? I got 847. That's it? Yeah. Fuck me. Well, on a t- felt like 16. It was like three minutes longer than anything else in the show. All this right. Point. Well, yeah. eight, 847. I would estimate seven full minutes of that was getting heat on AJ. Probably, yes. Then we had AJ and Jerry versus Rainbow Express. And AJ, you know, he just came off the match with David Young. So they gave him time to rest. And so Jerry Lynn started. And then they got the heat on him. How long did this one go? This was uh, longer. I got this at 12.23. All right. So about uh, easily 10 oh. minutes and In 30 fact, seconds. Yeah, I, I wrote 11 minutes of death, 90 seconds of fun. Yeah, at least 10 minutes and 30 seconds was just incessant heat on Jerry Lynn. Yeah. And then, you know, I'm going to get to the main event in a second. But the main event was, uh, how long was the main event? Main event, I got 11.44. All right. So, so 11 full minutes was heat on Scott Hall. And, bro, by the time I got to the main event, I was like, there's been more fucking heat on this show than in, like, three months of WWE programming, which is saying something. They just fucking just beat them and beat them. And I'm like, fuck, dude, I can't handle this much heat. Like, give me something else, dude. I got yeah. it. The, the the baby face is in peril. I've seen it for three straight fucking matches. I've watched, what, 30 minutes if you add it all up. 30 minutes of fucking heat in an hour. Yeah. I can't take it. It was very dull. Uh, the announcers in this match are bored silly, making jokes about waking each other up for, for all of this. Uh, as you notice, the heat on Jerry Lynn, there's a point where they try to sunset flip him. He sits down to cover them, but that means his crotch is in their face and then sells it like his dick is getting bit. This actually happened. And you know, the thing, too, was like, even I love Jerry Lynn and, and the Rainbow Express that can have good matches, but this was not great. No. Because... It was very boring. Well, I mean, they wanted to keep AJ out. So every now and then, Jerry Lynn would just start doing a comeback, but not tag. Yeah. And then get cut off again. I'm like, why don't you fucking tag, dude? And then there were other spots where it's like, they didn't, neither guy knew what the next spot was going to be. And they're yelling at each other as they're running the ropes and trying to, I was like, man, oh man. And finally, AJ tagged in, spiral tap, won the titles. I mean, I don't want to say too much bad about this match because the match really wasn't bad. But I was, was I, w- I was fucking hitting my wall yeah. at this point in the show. The, the last 90 seconds, AJ got his hot tag, and that, the last 90 seconds were very fun. You can add Lenny Lane, by the way, to the list of wrestlers who do the skull-crushing finale better than The Miz. And, that would uh, be all of them. Well, pretty much, yeah. And yes, AJ pins Lenny with a spiral tap. So AJ now is uh, uh, the X Division champion and also one half of the tag team champions with Jerry Lynn. And the end was fun. Okay, now let me let me take over for a second. Because this was where I lost my fucking mind with this show. So the match ends, and there's there's 15 minutes left. And I'm thinking, what? Honestly, it's it you know it's it's an hour and 45 minutes in. We don't need to go two hours. Is it going to be 15 minutes of recaps? Like what the fuck is left on this show? And then they cut backstage, and Jim Miller, NWA president, is tied up. And his shirt is like around his neck and his, his his abdomen, his large abdomen is exposed. And someone has spray painted F you on his gut. I'm like, what am I watching? Why? What? what Why? What the fuck is going on? And then they go to the ring and fucking Jeff Jarrett and K Crush and Scott Hall and Brian Christopher are coming out of the ring. And my, you know, my first thought is like, what do we need this match on this show for? Then my second thought is, you're telling me that this is a bigger match than your world championship defense or the finals of your world tag team tournament? This is is the main event. So the match starts, and they get heat on Scott Hall for fucking, fucking ever. They're beating on him and beating on him, beating on him. There's no commercial breaks to fast forward through. I've been watching two straight, frenetic, nonstop, never-ending hours of shit. And they're just beating on him. And fucking beating on him. And, I like, smoke is coming out of my ears. I got, I got more fireworks in my fucking head than outside right now. And finally, he hits a big double clothesline. And he starts crawling over to Brian Christopher. And I swear to God this is what happened. He gets close, and Christopher's got his hand out, and Christopher pulls his hand away. 
And then he puts it back. Because he pulled it away too fast. <laughs> and then Hall goes to make the hot hand, and he pulls it away. And he refuses to tag. Turns on him. And he punches him. And I just scream, fuck you. Fuck off. I waited all that fucking time. This is the wrong kind of heat when he fucking pulled his hand away. So then Hall now making a one-man comeback. And he's fucking blown up. He's fucking exhausted. And then he hits Crush with the edge, barely. And then he goes to grab Jared. You could just see his face. He's like, he's, oh, he's fucking gone. exhausted. He is gone. He's like, God damn it. And like Jared knows he's tired. So Jared jumps, but he doesn't lift. And then he goes to lift and Jared doesn't jump. And I'm like, fuck you two. Just get it on the same page and get this shit over with. And he finally gets him up. And then of course, Jared drops behind, gives him the stroke. Christopher hits the top rope leg drop. And, uh, and Jared pins Hall. And I swear to fucking God, the only thing about this that was better than if this had been in WCW is if this would have been WCW, Brian Christopher would have somehow pinned his own partner. At least Jarrett pinned the guy. So I'm fucking steaming. I'm like, God damn this fucking show. God, that fucking sucked. So then there's still more time. So they start bringing a fucking stretcher down. And they're bringing Stretcher down. And Jared is in the ring and he's just fucking ranting and raving. Oh, fight everybody in the locker room. I'm like, you're a heel or are you a baby face? What are you? You're challenging everyone in the locker room as the top heel. You'll fight anybody right now. The whole locker room. And he's ranting and he goes, I ran. I beat you in, uh, in 95. I beat you in 97. I ran your ass out of WCW. The boys ran you out of WWF. I'm going to run you out of NWA TNA. I thought, all right, great. Go off the fucking air already. No. Oh, we got to get a stretcher. They bring a fucking stretcher down to the ring. Now Jared's still ranting. I'll fight everybody. Bring them out here. Scott Hall, I'll run you out of NWA. It's the last thing I ever do. I'm like, you're going to run me out of NWA. I'm going to quit. I'm going to quit this fucking job. Then, Jared gives him a fucking elbow off the apron onto the stretcher. Hall falls on the ground. All the geeks come over. I got screwed, Jared said in the first NWA TNA show. It'll never happen again. I'm like, fuck off. Get off my television. Jared then goes and tips over the stretcher. I'm like, is this show over yet? It's got to be over now. Mike Tanay goes, thanks for listening, everybody. Here's what's happening next week. And then, Jared interrupts him. He attacks Hall again, and he starts beating him. And I'm like, end the show. I'll pay you another $9.99 if you just stop the show right now. Fuck you. And finally, it's off the air. God. So I I was done. I'm watching this. Done. I'm watching this on Impact's YouTube channel. I had the same thoughts you did. End the show, I wrote repeatedly. God. It finally ends, and in the most fitting bit of advertising ever, I get a commercial for a product that promises to cure both diarrhea and constipation. God. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, you're listening to this, and you think I'm over-exaggerating. No. Listen, I don't want to tell you to fuck off, but what I'm going to tell you to do is this. Fucking go find... I think it's even free. You don't have to spend was, any money. Yes. Go find episode three of NWA TNA, sit the fuck down, and just watch it from start to finish. Do it. And then come back and tell me that I'm exaggerating. You will be, you will you will feel exactly like I did by the end of this show. It just went on for an eternity. It never ended. God. I had a colonoscopy on Friday. <sighs> And I would rather go through that <laughs> again, the whole process again, than watch this garbage. Last week, you talked about how bad these refs were. <laughs> this poor guy watched Hall get turned on, get beat up by his own partner, and then still counted the pin. Well, technically, no, that's a DQ. There's something in the rules that says you can't punch your own partner. <sighs> anyway, it's another show, everyone. For the record, bro, how many more did you say there were, Sean? 108. 108? 111 total, I think. No. So so here's what is advertised for next week, y'all. Shamrock versus Omori. (laughs) From the Orient? From the Orient. A rankings match with six top X-Division wrestlers. And, oh, yes, the return of the Flying Elvises.
Good. They can at least work. Yeah. God. We're only three down <laughs> out of 110. Yeah, yeah. All right. So uh, I guess let's just do this. I got to go. Let's do the oh, data, yeah. data and wrap it up. This oh, won't be yeah. long. Hey, guys. Did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.